This is Mario with MIA Microflight, and this is an electric go kart made with a hoverboard. The frame of this particular go kart is very similar to the radio controlled version that I did uh, a while back. You can see those videos on my YouTube channel. I'm basically just a center tube with two tubes for the support of the axles. Uh, this is a telescopic. Uh, steel perforated tubing that you can get at Home Depot. The only problem is that uh, they don't make brackets such as these or even T brackets which is what, what, what I was actually looking for to match the distance of the holes here. I mean you can buy T brackets but then you have to drill the holes, redrill them because they don't match. No brackets are made for these particular ones. That's the unfortunate thing with this particular type of material. Um, I don't know why they don't do it. They should do it because it would make this product a lot more versatile. And you can use this not only for, uh, I think they use this for sign posts. Uh, you could use this for a lot more than that. You know, make you can make tables, you can make, you know, stuff like this. So uh, maybe this video might uh, catch on uh, to the attention of the manufacturer. And maybe they will make brackets, you know, to uh, fit the uh, one inch center to center line hold distances. section which is made from uh, also from uh, telescopic tubing this is a larger size than this so that it fits over the ends of the tubing like that and it's been cut on one side to remove this section here which is what makes up one bracket here I did the same thing here and that section that was removed makes up this bracket here the wheels are skateboard or um, scooter wheels 120 millimeters in diameter a one bolt right through the uh, C section here with nine lock uh, nuts to be able to hold the bolt in place and also the wheel in place there's a pivot um, bolt right through there with nine lock nuts as well we're looking at the uh, underside of this and I'll explain why that is in a little while so that's how that the section is done this is ready for the ball links and, and rods that will be attached to the steering column which I'm working on next. Going back to the rear section we have the, um, uh, the hoverboard which has been completely gutted out. I mean I removed the original control board because that was uh, bad. I removed the batteries. The batteries are still good on this one so I'm redoing the battery pack just to uh, be able to start from uh, a clean base. Some of the batteries are needed to be uh, charged individually. I don't trust those controllers that come with these batteries that are used on these products because they have their own uh, uh, circuit boards. But I'm more used to the controllers that I use for charging individual cells. You know, it's, uh, I like having the, the separate, um, if you have like a four cell, you have four wires attached to each cell and one for the ground and then that's how you charge individually each cell, you balance charge those, so I'm more used to those types of batteries and so that's how I'm redoing that battery that sat on this one here. The uh, controllers that you see here are electric bike controllers. <clears throat> they don't come with wiring diagrams, so you go, you have to find the um, uh, pinouts online uh, fortunately I found the pinouts for this one which is very close to the one I have and I have marked here some of the uh, uh, pinout um, uh, terminals this is for the battery this is for the speed control you have your potentiometer here to control regulate the, uh, the speed you have the whole sensor which I have to rewire that because that came with a different connector than the one that's in here that's the mating uh, connection for the whole sensor on these uh, brushless motors and of course you have the three wire uh, or three phase uh, wire setup here which is typical of these uh, motors that are embedded into these wheels. The nice thing about this hoverboard is that they uh, the motors are self-contained into the wheel which makes this a, a clean setup and this is the reason why I decided to do this project. I mean I do have some uh, scooters here as you see them in the background that I bought um, just to uh, revamp them and, and make a go-kart out of those parts but some of those scooters are, are in 
good working condition, so I think I'm going to keep those as, as they are. As I mentioned earlier, and this is the underside of the go-kart. We're looking at the bottom, so this will eventually get the covers, the original covers, of the hoverboard that will go there. And the reason for reusing this is um, to protect the underside of the electronics. So the electronics are housed the same way the original ones were. Um, except that I have taken out the controller for the uh, hall sensors here. I don't I don't need those because we're going to be controlling that directly through the through the controller here, individual controller. So I don't need the mechanical ones. So I took the, all that out. And so um, and I don't need the stabilizers either, which is the boxes that go along with these uh, in, in this section here. So they contain uh, uh, chips that do the stabilization. So those have been removed. So this will be the bottom with a cover, the same cover we have here. These covers have a couple buttons on the side, one's for charging, the other one's for starting the, the, the unit. So I'll be reusing that switch there and maybe replacing that with a uh, maybe a, just a toggle switch uh, just to make it easier to access. Or maybe just bring that onto the uh, um, post here that will support the steering column. The other side of this, just turn this around. Okay, so the upper side or the top section of this uh, go kart looks like this, and you can see how same idea with the brackets here that I had to manufacture from a larger size square tubing, just because there are no brackets that fit the one inch to one inch center line to center line distance of these holes. It's unfortunate because. It would, say, it would have saved me some time. Uh, same thing uh, here, and this is the reason why I had to manufacture these, but they, they actually came out pretty nice. Uh, you know, I, I really like this because they, they do hold nice and secure with the C shape, and they also provide a nice grip. You can do, do the grip on top or at the bottom. It's very similar to the way I designed my um, ready control go-kart. That uh, some of you may have seen in some of my YouTube videos uh, earlier and uh, I posted I think a couple months ago so look at those and you can see the where th that idea came from to do this in the same way but with steel um, square tubing I really like this stuff because it's almost like building an uh, erector set very easy to uh, if you provided you have all the parts uh, very easy to build it's all bolt on you know if you get tired of this you can change it you can reuse these parts somewhere else you know you're not locked to a welded frame also welded frames are kind of more involved because now you need a welding equipment and the seat to... is going to go right here and I already tested this with my weight I weigh about 190 pounds so this is uh, able to carry uh, 190 pounds 200 pounds real well, um, this bracing right here, along with these two bolts that, and, and the use of these uh, full plates here, I, I, I was going to cut this and just use just the, just the blocks that support the axle, but I guess my whole alignment was not really that beefy. And so I decided to just keep these plates as, as support, additional support and, and bracing, and just bolt here and there, as you see there, and it's very clean. The other thing that uh, this allows me to do is use the, the bottom cover, as I said, to cover the electronics. And this would be the top plate here, or the top cover. Now I am going to have to do some cutting here, just to because of this tubing protruding above the, um, the original uh, base of this uh, above hoverboard. So I'm going to have to do some cutting there, but it's not going to be that bad. And the reason I wanted to reuse this also is because I wanted to prevent any chance of getting your finger stuck in there because it, I, as I was testing this I was pushing this and I got my finger stuck there and it hurt so for safety reasons and I, just, and I think that's the, the reason why they include these covers here which is a great idea for safety you want to keep kids and, and people you know uh, their, their hands and, and body parts away from the the moving parts so this is a nice feature to uh, prevent that and to, to provide extra uh, security and, um, and safety. So I will be reinstalling this right here. I will have to cut, like I said, here 
and just to it, it, I don't care for this part right here so I'll cut here and, and this will clamp with the original screws onto this or base plate so that'll look like that and then the other one will be on the other side and you know it aesthetically it also gives it a nice a nice finish to this this I may paint this um, this is galvanized by the way and it's not going to rust I've had this this actually these particular ones uh, um, in a land yacht that I built uh, a number of years back you can see that video also on my YouTube channel I use the same type of uh, tubing the same concept here with the bra braces and brackets uh, reused I took that one apart and once again you know the, the, the ease of uh, doing uh, reusing these you know you just unbolt it and you can make something new and so that's the reason why I like this uh, telescopic perforated uh, tubing once again I just wish they had the brackets, you know, T brackets, L brackets, corner brackets. I wish they had those brackets for this type of spacing, hole spacing, but they, they don't. So, but, you know, with a grinder, uh, you can, uh, you know, cut your own. Like I did, it just took a little bit of effort and time in sanding them and cleaning them and bending. Once they're cut and, and fitted, I'll be able to manufacture the seat, which will go right on top of that. Of course, the seat is not going to be sitting on, on the plastic here, but it's going to be sitting on these parts right here. And that's the other reason why I kept these plates, is because I can I can come underneath here with with additional bolts and put a plywood. Uh, I can do my backrest or just manufacture one out of uh, tubing and, and, and foam, you know, just to give me a nice, um, just to provide a nice seating area. Here. This, um, these bars are 36 from end to end. So that distance, for me, I'm 5'11". If I sit right here, I can reach comfortably this point right here with my feet. So my feet can rest right there very comfortably at my height. And, you know, you can always adjust the seat if you want to. I'm going to make that, that adjustable. That's another great thing about this telescopic uh, perforated tubing is that you can make the seat adjustable by moving it via these... Uh, perforations here, yeah, these holes just move it forward and you have a, you can put a much shorter person person on this and that can reach the, the pedals. The uh, post for the steering column is going to be, that is about 16 inches from the very end, yeah, it's about 16 inches or 16 holes right here will be the, the column which is made from the same material and I'm going to use, these as, as my bracings, uh, I wish I had a T here. <coughs> I guess I could manufacture one out of the same material. I'm just going to have to bend one of the sides up like that once I cut it, and then I can make my T here just a lot better. So, just from the bottom here, if I make a, um, if I do my um, post, I, my plan was to do a scooter with this, and I did do a wooden scooter taking the wheels, one for the front, one for the back, but I didn't like the way uh, that was coming out in my uh, wood uh, 2x4 um, um, a test uh, frame model so I decided to just go for the go-kart instead. 